What I eat in a day videos are quite popular and I even make them myself, but there is a big problem with a lot of the videos in this genre and it's something that you need to be on the lookout for. So that's what we're gonna talk about today. So this is a problem that's been on my mind for a while now, and I've mentioned it briefly in other videos, but I thought it was time for us to finally have a dedicated conversation about it. And the problem I'm talking about with these what I eat in a day videos is that a lot of them promote dieting and unhealthy ideas about food and eating. Now, of course, all what I eat in a day videos aren't like this. And like I said, I even make them myself. I make one every single month. So it's not all of them, but a lot of them have this problem of promoting unhealthy ideas and mindset around food. So I wanted to break it down for you today and talk about all of the different ways that this can pop up in these videos so that you can recognize it yourself when you see it. So the first way that this kind of stuff pops up with these videos is before you even get into the video itself. It's the thumbnail. So if you go on YouTube and search what I eat in a day, you will see as you go through the top results that there are some trends with what the thumbnails look like. Most of them include pictures of the food, which totally makes sense because it's a video about food, but a lot of them also include a body shot of the person who made the video. Now there's something wrong with the person who made the video being in the thumbnail. I'm in most of my thumbnails. I mean, it makes sense because they are in the video. Why would they not be in the thumbnail? But it's the type of picture picture that's used, that's the problem. So these are often pictures of the person in a sports bra or in a bathing suit or somehow showing their abdomen and a lot of times showing off abs or a very flat toned stomach. And it's all this idea that you want to look like this person. It's very much based on image. It's based on the person's shape and weight and their appearance. And it's sending this message of, if you want to look like this, then watch this video so you can see what I eat. Because if you eat like me, then you can look like me. And so it's all around this idea of manipulating our food to change the way our body looks and focusing on appearance rather than focusing on health or the types of foods we like or the way the food we eat makes us feel. Feel. It puts the, po the focus on size and shape and weight. And a lot of times with these pictures, the person's face isn't even in it. They just chop the head off. It's totally cropped. So you're just seeing the torso or the lower half of the body. So it's kind of like this floating body without a head. So it's even taking the identity of the person away and just making it all about their body and the way their body looks. The next thing that you'll see in a lot of these videos is a tiny amount of food. So as the person is going through what they ate in that day, the meals are very small. And a lot of times the amount of food they eat over the course of the day is very small. Now, of course, I don't encourage people to make judgments about how much food another person needs because a lot of that is individual. It just depends on the person. It depends on the day and what they were doing and how hungry they're feeling and all that sort of thing. But at the same time, when you look at some of these videos, the amount of food that's shown is significantly less than even what is required for just basic life. Even if a person was just sitting around all day doing nothing, it's way under what a human body requires. And we don't really know what the full story is with that. And it probably depends on the person. I guess some people might be lying. Maybe they're actually eating more food than that, but they're showing less because it's part of an image and they think that they need to show small amounts of food because if they showed more food, I don't know. And that's maybe something with their ideas about themselves or their ideas about what other people will think or how much food someone should be eating or all these kinds of things. Again, it's still wrapped up in diet culture, this idea that there is a right amount of food to eat or that women should be seen eating less food and it's not a pol polite to eat a large amount of food, things like that, because it usually is women that make these types of videos. And, you know, it could also be people who are actually showing you what they're really eating and they're just severely under eating and restricting, which is also an issue. Another thing that you'll see with a lot of these videos is a focus on weight. So a lot of times it will just be in the title, like what I eat in a day, weight loss, or how I lost weight, what I eat, or things like that. Um, so that's, you know, kind of just right there in your face. But then there's also some more subtle ways that weight loss is incorporated into these videos. So one thing you might see is the person, you know, sharing what they're eating, also sharing 
tips and tricks to suppress your appetite. So they might say, I put this thing in and then that makes me feel full so I don't need to eat again later. Or if I get hungry, then I'll, you know, eat this thing that isn't very much as far as calories go or energy, but it makes me feel full or I'll drink this thing or whatever. So it's not saying this is about losing weight, but it's again, those diety tips and tricks kinds of things that people share. And I don't think that necessarily this stuff is malicious. I'm, I mean, maybe for some people it is, but I think a lot of it is just, that's how people have learned to talk about food and to think about food because we do live in such a strong diet culture. So they, they don't even kind of recognize that as a thing that they're doing. That just seems normal to them and kind of how you talk about food, especially as a woman. A lot of this stuff is part of how women are taught to interact with food and how to talk about food. And they learn it, you know, by seeing their mothers dieting and their aunts dieting and the images and messages we get about celebrities and losing weight or gaining weight or whatever. Um, so I think a lot of times people that are doing this in their videos might not even recognize that it's a thing that they're doing. Another thing you'll see with a lot of these videos are socially acceptable ways to restrict. So these are ways of restricting food that, you know, in a social setting in public don't necessarily send off red flags for people. So it allows people to, you know, kind of slip under the radar a little bit. So this is cutting out different food groups, going on different diets. So being vegan or gluten-free or paleo or whatever. A lot of times people will use this as a way to restrict with without people around them really noticing. And it's something you see with a lot of these videos. A lot of these videos are vegan or are gluten-free or you know various different types of diets or whatever. And that's not saying that just because someone eats gluten-free, that means that they're using that as a way to restrict. A lot of this has to do with intention. So if someone has celiac disease and they can't eat gluten, then yes, they're gonna be gluten-free. Um, or if someone is vegan because they do that for an ethical reason or something like that, then that's what their intention is. It's not about you know finding a way to cut out food so they can eat less. So again, a lot of this stuff you don't really know because so much of it is wrapped up in the person, but it is something that happens. And again, it's something to just look out for. If this is being promoted as I eat this way so that I can lose weight or I eat this way so that I can eat whatever I want, that's another phrase that you'll see pop up again and again. I can eat whatever I want and you can eat whatever you want if you eat this way, if you cut out this food, if you only eat foods that are X, Y, Z. And that's totally wrapped up in the diet mindset of not being able to trust your body and listen to what your body is saying, uh, but instead needing outside rules or guidelines to tell you what to eat. So it's kind of, it's masquerading as this rejection of a diet saying, well, you know, you can eat whatever you want on this. You don't have to diet because when you're eating this way, whatever way the person eats, then you don't have to worry about that. And so they try to position it as an anti-diet, but really it's just a different way of restricting. So instead of going by these outside guidelines about amounts, now you're going by these outside gu guidelines about types of food, which as a result restrict the amount of food that you're eating because you're cutting things out. This is just a different form of restriction. And sometimes it can start to get into overeating or binge eating territory. Sometimes you'll see people in, this vi in these videos encouraging people to overeat on the approved foods, saying that, you know, well, I ate XYZ food until I was absolutely stuffed until, or, you know, talking about eating until way past their fullness, totally ignoring what their body is saying and just being uncomfortably full. And so it's again, promoting unhealthy mindset, unhealthy behaviors around food. And it makes sense that that would happen because if someone is coming from a diet mindset and they're used to restricting the amount or feeling like they can't eat until they're satisfied or can't eat until they're full because that's what the diet has been telling them and now they have this new diet where they can do that or it's encouraged, it makes sense that they would go that direction because it's a pendulum swing that I mentioned so often in my videos if they've been restricting for so long that they would kind of go towards something that allows them to binge, allows them to binge, but it's still within the rules of the new diet. Again, a lot of this stuff, it's so psychological and sometimes it can be a reaction to something that someone has done previously. Another thing that can come up in these videos is unrealistic expectations. Sometimes the food that people say they're eating, that it's just not a typical day. Like they say it's a typical day and maybe it is for them. I guess I can't really know, but I'm guessing that for most people on a random Tuesday, you know, you don't 
come home from work and make a roast chicken with three or four different vegetable sides and a three layer chocolate cake from scratch and sit down and have this elaborate meal on your lunch break. I'm pretty sure most people don't do that. Um, and so sometimes you'll see things like that in these videos. And I mean, that's not an exaggeration. I have seen videos where people create like these elaborate multi-part meals for their lunch in the middle of a weekday. And I don't think that's helpful because that's not what your average person does. Um, and even if it is what this person does, I think that would be worth noting. Like, you know, I know most people don't get to do this, but I have this gap in the middle the day and I decide to do this with my time blah, blah 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 a lot of times people do do these things they kind of put it out as like this is just casual like we don't even need to comment on this because isn't this what everyone does I don't know it's kind of this like perfect image or this over-the-top image um, also a lesser form of this is people just so showing only Instagram worthy food so I know that food looking pretty is important um, it's something I keep in mind when I'm sharing food photos you know that people like to look at pictures that look nice and that you know you can actually see what's happening in the picture or in the video and see what the food is but at the same time if you're like if someone is crafting their food to only eat the things that they want you to think that they're eating or only the things that look the most beautiful, things like that, then I think that's a problem. Something else I see a lot in these videos is the perpetuation of nutrition myths. A lot of times, because this is about food, people start talking about nutrition and health and they'll start recommending things or just putting out information that isn't accurate. Um, and it's something that really stands out to me as a dietitian. I'm like, whoa, what are they talking about? Why are they saying that? But I think because again, so much of this diet and health and nutrition stuff is just so common for people to just casually talk about, a lot of people don't think that, oh, maybe I shouldn't tell all of my viewers that they should get this random powder or supplement um, or say things like, this food helps with this condition or this food will balance your hormones or like things like that that either aren't accurate or just kind of have no basis of any type of information. I think it's just something that people say on blogs or maybe sometimes things that are true or maybe partially true, but still it's not appropriate to just be like putting that out there that like everyone should be doing this or eating this or taking this thing or whatever. But that's something that happens a lot. So just be aware whenever anyone is making like health claims about the food they're eating or telling you you should eat this thing or everyone should have this or this food does this or this supplement whatever um be aware of that and don't necessarily do what they're doing or do what they're telling you to do because they don't know you they don't know your life and they're also not an expert in nutrition and all this is stuff i keep in mind when i do my videos and i'm not saying that i'm perfect or i always do my what i eat in a day videos the right way i don't know if there is a right way to do it but Something that I try to be conscious of is making sure that I'm not feeding into or perpetuating any of the things that I just talked about because I think a lot of these things really are a big problem and they just feed into the diet mindset, the diet mentality, uh, and it's not helpful. And so that's why when I do my videos, one thing I always do is, you know, say up front that this is not here to tell you what to eat or how much to eat because I would never want someone to take what I eat on a random day and think of that as prescriptive for them because it's not. It's just a little peek into my life. And so that's something that I started doing a while ago now because I started to realize that like you know people can use these videos in different ways that could actually be harmful and I don't want to be a part of that so that's something that I'm always working on and trying to be aware of and like I said I know I'm not perfect but it is something that's on my mind and I really try to pay attention to because I don't want to fall into being a part of any of this stuff myself and I think what I eat in a day videos can be really fun I like to see what other people are eating sometimes because it can give you ideas and inspiration, just different ways to switch up what you're eating or maybe different foods that you don't really eat very much or you never thought of using it that way or whatever. I mean, I think that can be really nice. And that's one of the big reasons why I do it is because I know a lot of you like seeing that, like, you know, getting new ideas for things that you might not have thought of. And we all get in our little routine. So sometimes it's just nice to step out of that and look around and see what other people are doing. And so while it is unfortunate that a lot of what I eat in a day videos do perpetuate unhelpful or even harmful ideas about food and eating and can promote a diet mindset, they're not all like that and they can be helpful and a lot of fun 
depending on how they're done. So it's just something to be aware of and look out for and see if any of these things are popping up in the videos that you're watching and then you can recognize it and choose to not watch that thing or at least understand how it might be influencing you. Also speaking about food and what I'm eating, if you're watching this video when it goes up or like the day after, I wanna let you know that this Thursday, I'm gonna be doing a live cook with me on my channel. So it's gonna be a live stream. We're gonna be doing that at 5.30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm really excited about it and I hope you can come. I'm gonna start doing these cook with me's on the first Thursday of every month. That's the plan right now um, to try doing it on a schedule like that so y'all kind of know when it's coming up. But I'm really excited about it. It's gonna be fun. We're gonna be making yummy food and then you'll get to see what I'm eating on Thursday. And if you want, you can cook your own dinner alongside of me and we can just kind of hang out and have a fun evening chat. I can answer your questions all that kind of stuff. So I hope you can make it for that and I hope you liked this video. If you happen to be new here and you want more healthy eating tips and nutrition info and videos like this one, then make sure that you subscribe because eating healthy and living a healthy lifestyle really doesn't have to be complicated and I wanna show you how to do it. And if you wanna watch some more videos, I have a couple linked over here that you might like. Thanks for watching, I hope you're having a great day and I'll talk to you next time.